This is not a syndicated show to tell the truth, but every time we do a story about Mitt Romney, I feel like it is. Mitt Romney has been caught in yet another lie. Last night on this program, NAACP Senior Vice President for Advocacy Hillary Shelton told me that the Romney campaign brought in black conservatives to support Romney as he addressed the NAACP convention. The uh, campaign actually gave me a list of African-American VIPs that they brought in to the NAACP meeting. They're bringing people in that they know will support his agenda from other places that aren't active with the NAACP. These are people that were brought in to actually uh, provide the cheering for them so there will be some support along those lines. Okay. Now, the Romney campaign denies that claim. Yet today, one prominent black leader confirmed Hillary Shelton's assertion. Florida Lieutenant Governor Jennifer Carroll, a Republican, attended Romney's speech and told this network, MSNBC, I was invited by Governor Romney. When asked who paid for the trip, she referred the reporter to the Romney campaign. The Romney campaign has not responded. Meanwhile, at a Montana fundraiser last night, Romney bragged about getting booed by the NAACP crowd. If they want more stuff from the government, tell them to go vote for the other guy. More free stuff, but don't forget, nothing is really free. Even if Romney had not, no intention whatsoever of race baiting or stirring up the welfare queen stereotype, this is part of a pattern. Romney delivered the same message of no free stuff to Latino leaders last month. And here's what he told a woman who asked him about access to contraception. If you're looking for free stuff you don't have to pay for, vote for the other guy. That's what he's all about, okay? That's not, that's not what I'm about. No, Mitt Romney is about more corporate tax loopholes, more tax breaks for the wealthy, less regulation. You see, in Mitt Romney's book, Demanding Affordable Health Care is freeloading, demanding more corporate welfare. That's patriotism. Let's bring in Karen Finney, MSNBC political analyst and former communications director for the DNC. How insulting or is this insulting what you just heard from Mitt Romney? No free stuff. Go vote for the other guy. It's stunningly insulting, and it's not just insulting as a person of color and as a woman, as you pointed out, but it's insulting. I mean, I was a middle-class kid. You know, my parents worked really hard, and thank God for the benefits of this country and the middle-class dream. They sent their kid to college, and I've, you know, we've all had great lives. And for Mitt Romney to insult working-class people like that, I mean, it makes it all the more clear that essentially going to the NAACP was about a punchline for a fundraiser. It was not about actually building a bridge or reaching out. And it also shows, I mean, Ed, it's so classist to say, you know, I told, you know, they. Who are they? That's yeah. not America. Well, he claims that he spoke with uh, black leaders, leaving the impression that they were NAACP leaders, only to find out that they were flown in, brought in by the campaign. Yeah. Uh, this is so deceiving, so cunning, isn't it? I mean, it, what does it say about his character? It's, it's very deceptive. And again, it, it says it's a very cynical move, Ed. I mean, it is the kind of thing, I mean, you've, you know, okay, we've all, you know, in campaigns, people sometimes stack the crowd, right? But in, in this instance, I mean, to do that and then to, you know, uh, uh, brag after the fact about, well, I thought I would get booed and, you know, I, you know, no free stuff. I mean, you know, again, it also shows uh, just such a lack of understanding about what it is to be a low income person or a middle income person in this country exactly. and the work. I mean, this is a real insult to working people. And I hope that independent voters out there are paying close attention to that language. And, you know, these guys turn around and they try to say that President Obama is the most divisive guy. Are you kidding me? That, you know, anybody who's talking about they and free stuff and sort of putting people into different classes clearly doesn't get what America is really about. Vice President Joe Biden spoke before the NAACP convention today and addressed the voting rights and voter suppression issue. Here it is. Did you think we'd be fighting these battles again? The president and I and Eric and all of us. We see a future where those rights are expanded, not diminished. Where racial profiling is a thing of the past. Where access to the ballot is expanded and unencumbered. 
I mean, I just don't think Democrats across the country can talk about this enough, Karen. I mean, yeah. and I think it goes beyond whether you're striking the right tone. You've got to make sure people are hearing this. Well, that's absolutely right. I mean, we know that, you know, the Brennan Center, what they say, 5 million people are going to be disenfranchised off the top. I think those numbers are growing as we speak. So we can't, you're right, we can't talk about this enough. And it's so important that people find out what are the requirements in your state and get out there and make sure you've taken care of it. I thought Joe Biden knocked it out of the park today, by the way. I mean, he gave such a great speech. It was personal. It was visionary. I mean, it was exactly, frankly, what Romney should have done. Oh. Tell us what's in your heart and yeah. share your vision. And and that's what Biden did. Well, he kind of got booed, too, when he told him he was going to wrap up his speech. <laughs> I, I know. That was I love cute. that. I love that. But, you know, also, Biden did a great job laying out the Obama record. I hope every Democrat takes a look at the speech because that, yeah. you know, that was that was a great speech. Karen Finney, great to have you with us. Thanks so much. Lots more Bye. coming up in the next half hour of The Ed Show. Stay tuned. This president, uh, you know, his response to everything is we need to raise taxes. Republicans continue to push the greatest lie ever told. I'll set them straight with the big panel next. The Baltimore Sun has a problem with the Ed Show and independent voters. I'll correct the record tonight. And Penn State's disgrace got worse today. The most powerful men at Penn State failed to take any steps for 14 years to protect the children who Sandusky victimized. I'll ask New York Times columnist Bill Roden how anyone can defend Joe Paterno after today's shocking report. Sometimes you have to make tough decisions and sometimes you have to work around systems. 